The day begins with morning prayers. 11 children and 45 grandchildren have grown up in this house. It belongs to Toktanali Mamietov, or Aksakal, as the elder is respectfully known. We live traditionally here for many generations now. We were all born in this house, but our lives have changed a lot recently. In the village of Bashkendi, people are getting poorer every year. They've traditionally made a living from raising livestock and farming, but their earnings have been steadily diminishing. Although Aksakal will soon turn 70, he's still fit enough to work and feed his extended family. But it keeps getting harder. We have less and less water. That's a problem. There's a river nearby. It used to have so much water in it, you could barely cross it on horseback. But now the water barely reaches the horse's belly, even when the river is full. There's no place like the Tian Shan Mountains between Kyrgyzstan and China. More than 5,500 plant species are native here. There are still glaciers, and their water feeds rivers and gives life to the environment. But because the air is warming due to climate change, the glaciers are melting, and landslides have become more frequent. What can be done? Aksakal has heard that people in a nearby region are working on living with climate change and not against it, that they know more about modern agriculture. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union, that kind of knowledge has become rare in Kyrgyzstan. Look, thousands of hectares of land. In Soviet days, it belonged to a collective farm. It was closely monitored and cultivated. But now, hardly anyone understands a thing. That's why it's all rotting and dying. But not everywhere. Near a village called Balikchi, Aksakal meets someone who's maintained his livelihood and even prospered despite climate change. With help from some foreign foundations, Kana Chantayev has managed to create a small oasis in the midst of this rocky wasteland. He's planted an apricot grove, the only fruit that can survive here. This year's crop has already been harvested and sold entirely to Russia. Chantayev likes passing on his experience to others. Apricots are a good idea. Why waste your time and energy on crops that won't ripen here? I could do it too. All you need to know is where to get water. Even apricots need that. Kanet Chantayev uses meltwater from the mountains. Each young tree is irrigated individually. It's a system that helps bring life to the wasteland. Kanat Chantayev proudly shows us his smallest trees. He hopes they too will soon bear fruit here in the foothills of the Tian Shan Mountains. I'm convinced that in this area the only crops that make sense are crops that are economically useful, plants that can help solve problems. Only those kinds of projects have a future here for many, many years. But most people here don't know how to join these kinds of projects. International organizations like the German Agency for International Cooperation, the GIZ, are providing help. Not far away, the agency is training farmers with workshops and seminars. <laughs> These beans here are our money, our play money, says Maksad Minazarov, a trainer who's traveled here from the capital, Bishkek. Today's topic is how to respond to major weather shifts, for example, when heavy rain follows a dry spell. The farmers take part in a role-playing game as planners, livestock farmers and bookkeepers. They're learning how to deal with climate change instead of watching helplessly. 
We are learning things here for life, how to save, how to run things, how to feed and care for your animals. Mm -hmm. We have to learn how to run our farms ourselves, including handling losses and being less dependent on the weather. In this game, the farmers learn how to prepare and how to respond quickly if need be. They find their own solutions. One wants to save money, another wants to invest, for example, in new animals. And in the end, we see who is most successful, and we learn from that. Back in Bashkendi, the villages also want to learn how to deal with the challenges of the future. Kyrgyzstan is the most beautiful country on earth. We have both sun and snow, snow-covered mountains. But the two don't go well together. The warmer the sun is, the less snow there is for us. So we have to change our lives, find new ways to survive. They have no other choice. But change might also bring a new beginning.